Last week, when we were talking, I asked a question. And to be quite frank, I must have asked that question under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because when I went back and I was listening to a clip that was edited out of that sermon, to be very frank, I kept asking myself that question. If God were to deal with you in the same manner that you have dealt with him, what would your life be right now? If God were to deal with you or interact with you in the same attitude that you have given him, what would your life be right now? For example, if God decided that it is the degree of magnitude in which you obey him and you walk according to his instructions that he will supply air to you, oxygen. Right now, what would your life be like? It's very easy to claim, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But truly, in your day-to-day -day activity, in your day-to-day -day walk with God, if God were to deal with you the exact way you have dealt with him, if regarding time, if God were to deal with you in the exact way you have dealt with him regarding time. Let's say, for example, in the meetings that has been set up between you and God, if God were to show up for you the exact way you have shown up for him, how would your life be right now? In the area of giving, if God were to give to you in the same magnitude that you have given to him, what would your life be right now? The Bible says that if you, O oh Lord, keep record of sins, who can stand? Who? Not even the pastor standing before you. We are all products of his grace and mercy. All. It will be pride and self-righteousness to think that we have been so good that we merit his faithfulness. God is faithful. Can you tell your neighbor, my God is faithful? We have gathered here this morning to express our thanksgiving to God. To thank him for everything he has done. Let me tell you this. If you are here under the sound of my voice, truly, God has been good to you. God has been good to you. You, you, you don't have any moral right or grounds to deny his faithfulness. God has been good to you. Honestly, God has been good to you. Please tell your neighbor, God has been good to me. In this passage we just read, it said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds. Make known his deeds. Which means, talk about what he has done for you. Talk about what he has done for you. Today is the day we dedicated for, for this purpose. A day where you are expected to talk about everything that God has done for you. Please, I beg you, it will be such a shame for you to hold back your praise from our maker. It will be such a shame. Please. When you leave this place today, let it be that I, from the depth of my heart, I expressed my thanksgiving to God. If you do not express your thanksgiving to God, it's a demonstration of pride in a very high magnitude. And so he says in the next verse, sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works, he did it. He did not forget. Yet, he expects us to declare it. And so he wants us to declare his wondrous works. He was the one that did it. You know how many times he would tell the children of Israel, I was the one that brought you out of Egypt. He knows. He doesn't forget. What God did for you, he did not forget. Please tell your neighbor, he has not forgotten. Preach to them, preach to them. What God did for you, he has not forgotten. 
I saw a post on social media and somebody asked a question. He said, what if all the offerings that you have given in your lifetime is your feeding money in heaven? <laughs> Don't forget that heaven is for eternity. How many days with your, will your feeding money last? Oh, you cannot answer again, Abby. <laughs> if God were to... <laughs> if, if God were to do it, do me, I do you. What would your life be like? Now, I want you to think. I'm telling you so you can think. I have thought about it. You think about it. If, if God said, Ah! Sarah... Or Stella, the way you have been showing up for me, that's how I want to be showing up for you now. These days, people call Jesus like pure water. Somebody has not prayed in 14 years, in 10 years. And then they are involved. Maybe the car is about to crash. You see them calling Jesus with... You, you, with their spirit. Jesus! I've seen people of the other faith, as the other people are calling Jesus, it too. Jesus! We expect him to show up for us. We expect him to come through for us at every given point in time. But we fail to declare his wondrous works. Anytime you fail to declare God's goodness and God's faithfulness, you are invariably taking credit for it. And there are many things that God can share. But his glory, he said he will not share with anyone. And so it's very important for us to cultivate the habit of thanksgiving. Today we're going to be talking about the spirit of thanksgiving. The spirit of thanksgiving. And it says in verse 11, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done. His wonders and the judgment of his mouth. It says that you should remember. There is a very high tendency that you can forget. But please remember. For example, many of us, when we were leaving our father's house, we failed to say, Daddy, Mommy, thank you. Do you know why? Because... Did I give birth to myself? She would not bomb me. Why should I be grateful? But no. Nobody, not even God, owes you anything. Nobody. If you receive something, it's not because it was, you're not entitled to it. Be grateful. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. I said last week, that gratitude unexpressed is ingratitude expressed. Which simply means that when you're not saying thank you, you are saying something. What you're saying is that he doesn't deserve your thanks. He doesn't deserve your thanksgiving. Is that the case? Is that the case? Would you come before him on a day like this and you are so put together, your clothes are so important, your makeup is so valuable that you, you refuse to dance before him. You refuse to... Maybe you have so much money that you have worked for with your strength. And so you feel like it's childish to, to dance before God. Ah, you have been sold a lie and you bought it cheaply. Many times, when we come before God, we are too, we are too sophisticated to dance before him, to express our gratitude towards him, to even speak to him. Sometimes we are too posh, we are too put together to even stand before him. 
when they say let's pray sometimes you you, you feel like it's it's for people that are the less privileged so you cross your leg and sit with your phones If God were to deal with us the way we deal with him, it will not be good. And so, this king called David that we read about even on Thursday, maybe I should bring out that scripture. Oh, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Please, come look at 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, from verse 11. 11. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obedidom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obedidom and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obedidom, and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Bethlehem to the city of David with gladness. Next verse. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, which means that every time they went six steps, they sacrificed an oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord. Now, now look at this carefully. We talked about this extensively on Thursday. But I feel strongly led to talk about it again today. It says, then David danced before the Lord with all his might. The Bible has no wasted words. It says, David, do, at this time, it's important for us to understand one thing. This man called David, he was no longer the shepherd boy. It was no longer running away and hiding in caves and all that. He was the king of Israel. A king. Do, do, do you know what it meant to be a king of a nation like Israel? And the Bible says that he danced before the Lord. The first question I asked when I first read this. The Lord was not physically present before him. He was on earth dancing in front of people just like you would dance today when we start the Thanksgiving proper. But you see, the Bible did not say that he danced before the people. Even though he danced before the people. So his physical location was in front of the people. But when God looked at him, God saw him standing right before him. And so scripture would say that he danced before the Lord with all his might. And like I shared on Thursday, we were informed about David's skillfulness in playing the harp. We know by scripture that David was an effective shepherd. He took care of the sheep with his whole heart. We know that David... At some point in time, he was trained and his hands was equipped for war. But one thing that we must agree, that David was not a skillful dancer. For many things that he was, he was not a skillful dancer. No wonder, people who don't know how to dance, they have to use their energy. That's why he said that um, he danced with all his might. Beloved, between me and you, don't tell anybody, I don't think the dance made sense. But you see, it did not matter to God whether it made sense or not. What mattered to God was the purity of heart that that step of thanksgiving was originating from. And so, David's dance went up to God like a sweet smelling aroma. Even God recognized his dance. His dance was a statement. His dance was not just physical moves of his body, but he was actively making a statement. And he says, and David was wearing a linen ephod, 
What this means is that what he was wearing was something that can easily give way. Hello? Are you understanding what I'm saying? He was wearing a very light material that, to be quite frank, if you move to... You know, there are some clothes you wear, you don't move to... You, the ladies understand this better. After you have stinged this, you have tied that, and then you walk gently. That's why every lady... Most of the time, they have slippers in their bag. They wear wigs, and when they leave our presence and get to the cab, what do they do? And so the Bible says that David was wearing a linen effort. But it did not matter. Next verse, please. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. You, you, I'm, I'm showing you a pattern here. We've seen him dance. Not just dance, but scripture says that he danced with his might. And here, it also talked about them shouting. Shouting. And with the sound of the instrument. Next verse. Now, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Micah saw his daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord and she despised him in, in her heart. Let me tell you this. In an atmosphere of thanksgiving, be careful what you think about people dancing. Be careful. Because you see, God, when a person is expressive of their thanks and, and gratitude to God, they get his attention. And so God is not just focused on them. He's focused on anybody who is focused on them with a bad intention. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the Bible says that Micah, his wife. But you see, what I found interesting about this scripture is that if you read from that point to the end, the Bible kept saying Micah, the daughter of Saul. So at that point in time where she despised David, God recognized her as the daughter of Saul, not as the wife of David. <laughs> that made the Lord grant you understanding. You see, there is an identity that you have taken up when you come to Christ. And, and so, I always say that your decision to follow Christ is daily. Which means that I know you have repented. But you see, every day you must, you must make a decision to follow Christ. Your actions are indicative of the fact that I, you either want to continue with him or you're not interested in continuing with him. And, and what happened here was that Micah was the daughter of Saul, quite all right. But at this point in time, she had become the wife of David. And so, according to scripture, one would expect that the grace of David would cover Micah. But at that point in time, she, she despised a man that God had delight in. In the place of thanksgiving. The best thing to do when you feel like there are enemies around you is to dance before the Lord. There is a kind of interest that is kindled in the heart of God when someone offers him lavish thanksgiving. You may not understand because you have not been a king before, but for kings, kings don't just walk anyhow and act anyhow. There is a certain level of decorum that the king is supposed to, 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 to express when he moves around, even the way he talks. In the Bini Kingdom, for example, where I'm, I'm not from there, but I'm from there. How do I explain it? I'm from Zion, but I'm from there. Sometimes in certain occasions, the, the upper covers his mouth. Even the, the queen with, with, with an handkerchief, a white handkerchief, they cover the mouth. When he sits, there's a way he sits. It doesn't move around. It doesn't go anywhere. That, that, that's, that's not the king of Israel. But you can see the level of reverence and decorum. And everybody behaves themselves when they're around him. But you see, David, though he was the king of Israel, but in his heart towards God, he was still that little boy that God gave grace to, to, to stand before Goliath. 
He was still, you see, I, I, I give you a secret. No matter how far God lifts you, no matter how high God raises you, please, the place you were when he first met you, make sure you are in that position when you relate with him. If not, you are insulting him. So now, you have been blessed. You now have clothes. You can, you can afford to pay a tailor to sew your clothes before you will go to Karimo. Inside, inside. And you go early on time. So that you can, as they open the bail, you can select. But now you first, oh, there's a customer over there. But, but, but now you can, you can pay a tailor to make you, a, you give them stand, say so, and they make something nice for you. All of a sudden, you are too big to throw yourself around for God. Please, please, don't be like Micah. Be like David. David threw caution to the wind. It did not matter. Now as the, Lord, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Micah, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. Again, it says before the Lord. You will be dancing here. But you see, your spiritual location is before the Lord. You cannot see him, but he is right there. It's not very often that we, we act on earth and the Bible says that we are before him. It's not everything we do. But you see, for, on this particular note, he said that David danced before the Lord and she despised him in her heart. She, the Bible did not say that she, she was telling everybody the king is a foolish man. He doesn't even know how to carry. No, he said she despised him. So God was so attentive upon David that he could sense a negative thought against him. Next verse. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of tabernacle and David had directed for it. Then David offered bond offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So we see that not only did he dance, he did what? He offered offerings before the Lord. And so he, he, he demonstrated his thanksgiving by dancing and he also demonstrated it by giving to the Lord. Next verse. And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Can we go to the last verse? Last verse. Can you read this? It says, Therefore, Micah, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. I'm not saying it to scare you. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. When the spirit of thanksgiving comes upon you, even the battles that you don't know that you are fighting gets resolved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, there is power in sincere thanksgiving. When you, from the depth of your heart, express your thanksgiving unto God, God becomes very interested in you to the degree that is... Have you seen when the president, let's not talk about our president, all right? Can, can, have you seen where, maybe you watched it on video, where the, the president of America or the president of Russia goes to a place? There, there are people that you see around most times on suit, most times on dark shades, and you see telecommunication. You see something in their ears. Now, everybody is focused on the president, but they are not. Why? They are looking at the person who is focusing on the president with the wrong intention. That's exactly what happened here. David was dancing before the Lord, and then God was watching everyone around him. The most secure place to be in is in the place of thanksgiving. If thanksgiving were to be a location, it is the safest place to be. Because at that point in time, God's eyes are roaming and watching over you. Can somebody say a loud amen? amen. Can you say a loud amen? amen? 
God expects you to be thankful. Luke 17, 11 to 19. We'll round up with this. Luke 17, 11 to 19. Let's read this quickly. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Next verse. Then he entered, then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers. How many men? How many men? Ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. Now, according to the law, they could not come to the congregation of the people because they were afflicted with leprosy, all right? So they stood afar off simply because they were not qualified to be in the midst of the people. Then, as he entered a certain village, okay, next verse, next verse. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So they prayed to Jesus, asking him to show them mercy. So when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourself to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. So let me quickly bring context to this. When a leper is cleansed, before he is allowed to come into the congregation of the people, the priest should sanction him. The priest should approve that he is no more a leper, therefore he can come to the congregation of the people. So Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priest. They were still lepers. The Bible says that it was in the place of their obedience. As they went, they were what? They were cleansed. Next verse. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, what did he do? What did he do? He returned. One of them, all of them were cleansed. The Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. But one of them realizing that, ah, I am healed. He returned with a loud voice. Glorified God. Don't be quiet about your thanksgiving. I said it. For thanksgiving to be thanksgiving, it must be active. If it is passive, it is not thanksgiving. It says, he, he returned and with a loud voice, willing to let every single person know that he has been healed. He wasn't something he was willing to cover. L let me tell you, many of you, God has been faithful, <laughs> but you are covering it. You are, you are hiding it. Why? You don't want people to know that it was God that did it. Is that why you're covering it? Next verse. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him what? Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. You know that Samaritans are Jews. They are not, they are not good friends. So this was absurd. It wasn't normal. But he threw all caution to the wind. He did not care. He came with a heart full of thanksgiving. So Jesus answered and said, we are dead. See, if you, if, you, if you don't know, the life of Jesus was a very busy one. So the tendency that he would forget that he told, he did not discuss with them much. He just said, go show yourself to the priest. That's what he said. So the tendency that he would even remember the, the face of the guy was, he could easily have forgotten. But, but he answered and said, we are there not ten cleansed. So while the man stood afar off, don't, remember the Bible says that they were afar off. So while he, they were afar off, he was counting them. And so when one of them came back, he asked a question. Were there not nine? I mean, were there not ten? Where are the other nine? It means that as we are gathered here today, God has expectations. If you do not remember what he did for you, he did not forget. And so he's expecting that you come back in thanksgiving to tell him thank you. Not privately. But what? Publicly. <laughs> Jesus likes public di display of affection. He does not like to be hidden. If you're in a relationship with Jesus, he would ask you to post him on all your social media posts. But I'm not joking. He doesn't like secret relationship. He doesn't like you to hide him. And so, he said, were there not any found who returned to give glory 
to God. Accept this foreigner. God is asking you today. He's asking all of us. Uh, we are the people that I saved from, from sickness. I, according to my record, I healed 300 people. How come I'm not seeing them say thank you? What is, what is happening? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. So I have a question. There were 10. He told to return, to go and show themselves to the priest. Those 10, as they went, they were cleansed. One came back and he told him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. What about the other nine? So when we don't thank God, it means that there is a certain seal that is placed on our testimony when we return to say thank you. From what we don't, we lose the privilege and opportunity to receive that. Your faith has made you well. Today, from the depth of your heart, I want you to offer thanksgiving to God like you have never done before. Think about all that he has done for you. Oh, there's a song that says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my very soul will shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving. 